<laughs> okay, we're good. We're good? Yeah. Sorry about that. Great. Okay, guys. Well, I do a podcast called Geek Farm Life. The short story to it is that uh, my wife and myself moved out to the country and we decided to do a podcast about rural living. About a year ago or so, and I think it still is, there's just nobody who talks about the subject. And we started doing a podcast, and at the time we did it inside. And you know what? It sounded like two people talking on a microphone. And it worked. It was a podcast about real life, nobody did it. And I think it was about the third or fourth show we decided, why are we doing it inside? Let's get outside. Let's pick up some animal sounds. We did a sound scene tour, just a milking, I think it was. Something really, really simple. And the feedback we got was just enthusiastic. But we want to hear the animals more. So we decided, let's go outside. And let's record a podcast in the barn. So basically, this talk is based is mainly about get your podcast outside. We had good luck with it. It's not for everybody. Not every podcast. You know, if you do something like a radio show, all time radio show, where you're creating the sound environment, fine. But if it's a couple cast, it's a couple of you talking, and it's about something that you can go and listen to, or you have some background noise involved with it. Get out there. You don't need to be in a perfect soundproof studio anymore. Or a coffee shop. Or a coffee shop. <laughs> and that's where I think I had it on here. Um, well, actually, no, not this slide, next slide, I guess. But, you know, for, for example, um, if you're recording audio, go out, you know, and do the interview at some place that's not too loud, but some place that works. Um, this is our studio. Oh, uh, shut it didn't come out too long. <laughs> but, uh, we're up in a hayloft, and we do get around, we go outside in the summertime, and other times when the wind's blowing and it's cold out, it's also not too cold, we go up into our hayloft, we set up a table, we hoist the table up there, and we record, and throughout our podcast, the entire background audio is filled with turkeys, <laughs> goats, and the only reason you hear the goats a lot is because you got bells on them, so you can hear the, the bells chiming in the background. And, this is, you know, it's, it looks really crude, and it is crude. And some of our equipment is really basic, because do you want to take your condenser microphone that you paid 500 bucks up to that? And this looks better than it is. The floor bounces quite badly. Dust flies. It's not a place where you want to, you know, take expensive equipment. And if you drop it, you break it. You know, it's got 16 feet to fall to a concrete floor below that. So where should you go? And this is, um, you know, an example, we go up to the barn, we go up to the pasture, fit innovations, which is a podcast about Ryan, he does it while he's Ryan. <laughs> and if you listen to it, you can hear him breathing and you can hear all the noises around him. And that's his show. It's, you know, I guess if you want to go back to some of the talk we heard earlier today, he's branded his show, you know, with that particular sound environment. And like I said, don't go to a coffee shop. I, you know, I like a lot of podcasts, but you have to ask, why are you in a coffee shop? You know, why am I here? Yeah, I know. Yeah. Exactly. It's a coffee table book, that's why. Well, I, and if, you, <laughs> if, you're doing a show, if you're doing a show about uh, brewing coffee, I don't like this anybody's show, don't get me wrong yeah. here. No, that's not the point at all. If, but if you're doing a show about coffee, then you know, it might be a perfect environment for you to be at. Utilize the type of whole environment for your actual exactly. culture. Exactly. Use the entire environment. Yeah. You can get out there, you can travel. It's yeah. really easy to move. You know, and we were at uh, PAB last year, and I kept hearing what these people, you know, you want to make your room sound bigger, you want to put stuff on the walls to deaden the sounds, you don't get all the echoes. Like, right here, this would make pretty bad recording. Um, sorry, guys. <laughs> um, it was better because I am close. It, it is. But it's not, it's, not, it's not very good audio, and it's hard to understand. Even with the best equipment recording the audio in here, it's not that good. It's very echoey. You can make it better. And... Get closer so the, to the sound. Get closer to the sound. That's exactly. That's a lot of what we did. And okay, next slide. <laughs> Sorry. That's yeah, so all we did. You know, the question is, I think a lot of people in here sort of understand why. But just in case, for us, when it's really cold out, when it gets down to minus twenty, we don't like being in the barn. It's not. You end up sitting out there for an hour and a half to do a. a you know, we do a forty-five minute show, but then get set up, tear, tore, tore down, and the whole works. It comes up to about an hour and a half, minus twenty, hour and a half, not fun. But when you're inside, and we do it inside, we just don't have that energy and the feel. Maybe it's just because we're used to doing the show outside, we're used to having a particular environment. 
but it's also the animal noises. And you know, we react to the animal noises. A couple shows ago, we had a goat that sort of banging his head into the wall. We don't know why he was banging his head into the wall. It was just boom, boom. It, you know, it made us laugh. And we said, what's he doing? We, you know, we had to look over. It, you know, we don't do a, a really crisp show, and this is probably, you know, if you're doing a highly edited commercial corporate show, it might not be 100%, you know, depending on the show you're doing, it might not work great. But we're doing a fun show. We don't, you know, we don't mind taking a break for 30 seconds to laugh about a goat or a turkey making some weird noise or something along those lines. Or giving birth. Giving birth. We haven't had that quite yet. That would be good. We get a lot of listeners. We've actually had goat. Uh, I just recorded my son's birth two weeks ago. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> how many how many hits you get now? Uh, not yet. Just Joe and I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing it really does when you when you're outside with all those noises, it does bring the listener in. I don't know how many comments we've had back from listeners saying, you know, almost would you guys just be quiet? We'd like to hear the animals more. <laughs> <laughs> but it, it brings them into the show and it makes them feel like they're part of the show. And I don't know how, you know, a lot of the talk you hear is how to build a community. I don't know if we build a good community, but we certainly have a listener base that's loyal and enjoys listening to the show. They enjoy hearing the animals. And a lot of them, you know, in our case, may or may not have uh, grown up on a farm. Some have, some have, and some want to. And that pulls them in and attracts them. To, they get to hear what it's really like. And, you know, I'm talking about our show in this case just because that's what I have first-hand experience with. I don't mean this to be selling. I'm just using that. You know, I'm not an expert on all these fields. I, I got cheap audio here, <laughs> and that's what I know. But uh, you know, if you're doing a show that's outside, you, you know, Tim has taken his and done a lot of recording on his bike last summer, and it takes you all the trap. You know, it, it makes you feel like you're part of the experience, and you get to hear what's going on around them, and it really does pull you in. So, how do we do it? Um, there's a real cheap and easy way. This is how, this is the equipment we used for our first twenty some shows. Okay, I River recorder and binaural microphones. No, we didn't shove them in our ear, we just put them on a mic stand and held them out. They're just generic microphones, and they're omni mics, so they pick up sounds from everywhere. It's cheap, it's really easy, and you can use any microphones you want. I just happen to have had these, so it came in convenient. iRiver, nothing special with an iRiver, it's just got a it's just got it's just an MP3 recorder, and it's got preamps, so you can actually hear the microphones. Um, and there's one thing I'm not showing you, actually, I sort of lied, is the headphones. You really want to monitor your own audio, especially when you're outside. You want to hear what the listeners are going to hear, and it sets your distance from the microphone. And you do want to keep a constant distance and a constant level into the mic. The headphones really do help with that. If you can't hear yourself through the headphones, they can't hear you either. Um, there's big problems with it, but this works well. You know, quite honestly, I think our audio was intelligible. It wasn't fabulous. But it did work, and it, it proved the concept. People liked it. It was in stereo. We separated these guys a little bit, so they were far apart. And people really loved the stereo sound effects. So they had ear, earbuds on. You had a fly go by. It sounded like you know, a fly went past your head. There, it was pretty cool. You know, it was, it, but you, was, you, know, you have a couple problems with it. Yeah. Um, you can have too much background audio, you can have too little background audio. You just don't have the control anymore. Um, it's problematic. You, you know, the only way you basically control your volume is how loud you speak into the mic or how far away you're from it. But, you know, if you have to, it worked. Um, another huge problem you have with iRivers and any cheap MP3 recorders, they drive, you have to drive the microphone pretty hard if you want to pick up lots of ambient sounds. And you get a lot of hiss. They're cheap amplifiers and you end up with hiss. It's, that's the name of the game, unfortunately. But we did it, you know, as I said, we did it for a long time this way. The main advantage is you can just take this anywhere, shove it in your pocket, and off you go. There you go. You can see the you can see it, you can see my cheap. We did it really cheap for the first little bit. That was our headphones yet. <laughs> um, the next way we did it, we did a step up, and we're pretty much doing the show the exact same way. We went to directional microphones for, for everybody we talk to on the show. Main advantage is we actually use these. We, we, we have not upgraded our budget big time. Um, 
you want a mic that picks up your voice, and this sets a constant distance from your lips to the microphone. And that keeps your levels constant, and you don't want this microphone picking up background noises. Because what we do is we then turn, there's two of us, or you, know, you can have as many as you want on your podcast, we then take a, another microphone, in our case a third microphone, and put it out there, just to record background audio. And that's our background mic. I didn't pull it out, so just give me a sec here. This is what we use these days. It was given to us by a, another fellow. I actually like these old mics. TZM? What's that? TZM? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty good. They are pretty good. And if you're gonna do, if you're gonna be serious about bringing in some background audio, definitely worthwhile. Um, uh, I'll talk about the little bit. Is that a newer one? No, it's ancient. And that's a little battery, is it? Big one. What's that? A battery? No, no battery. No. In this case, what we did was, um, so we went to, uh, let me go walk through the list. Everybody gets one of these now. I love headphone mics, or I love, you know, Google microphones. Um, holding one, or even one on a mic stand, it works great, but as you saw in our studio, and when you're out and about, you know, when we're outside, we don't have the ability to put mic stands down. The wind's blowing. It's, it's hard. You know, it's a real pain. You can buy high quality. If you want your really good audio with your good bass and everything, go buy a decent mic, a decent headset mic. They're out there at 300 bucks. Up to you. Um, we then turn around, and actually I run it into a compressor limiter. At first we didn't. Now we do. I built this one at home myself. But <laughs> Um, you can buy them commercially. They're, they're, they're more than I think they should be. So right. what is that? It's a compressor limiter uh, and a noise gate. It basically what it does when you're not talking, it shuts the microphone off. When you are talking, it rolls the sound off a little bit. And if you get too loud, it cuts it off on the top. You do not need one, but it does improve your audio, audio quality a little bit. So you take that from the mic into the mixer? Yep, and then we go from the limiter into the mixer. Uh, we do our show completely live. And there's a couple reasons why you do it. I'll talk about it in a second. But we then go into the mixer. We then mix ourselves together. We pull in the audio, the background audio. So you say, shut this guy into one channel. And then now you have complete control over your background noise. If your background audio drops off, and you can't hear anything anymore, and it's, you don't detect it come back up, you can push up the background volume a bit. If it gets too loud, pull it back. It gives you a little bit of control over that background noise. You know, if, if you did it in a coffee shop, because you're doing the coffee podcast, um, that allows you, you know, the coffee shop gets loud, pull that volume back. Because the real key is, it's supposed to be background audio. You're not supposed, it's not supposed to override you. People still have to be able to understand what you are saying, and they have to understand it easily. Remember, your listeners might be traveling in a car somewhere, in busy traffic. They can't be straining to hear what you're saying. It's very important that your voice come through clearer than anything else. The background is simply there to provide an environment and you know to, to sort of fill in the entire podcast. And these guys provide our little boom mics, also provide your headset so every person can monitor what is being recorded. Everybody who's involved in the podcast should, in my opinion, should hear the output, the final output that you're recording. Because if you have something else playing or some background noise come up, everybody needs to be able to hear that. And they need to be able to hear their own voice when they're speaking. So, okay. Um, so maybe, they're, they're actually hearing the they're, podcast? Yeah, they're, they're hearing the podcast as it's being recorded. We do, and it's all wireless? Is that wireless? No, this is, this is wired. Oh, I see. You're all sitting down. Okay. We're all sitting down in a fairly oh, close location. Um, the point where this breaks down... Yeah, walking around. Yeah, just, yeah, you don't want to walk around. Yeah, no walk around in this case. Um, you also have to be careful with the environment you're in. If the person starts walking around and you do have a background light, Normally you're driving them fairly hard, trying to pick up a lot of audio, and you can hear their footsteps. Might be good, might not be. Um, you can hear them clank around. Depending on what you're doing, that may or may not be what you're looking for. For our case, it's not. We really, you know, we're trying to emphasize the animal noises, so we're seated, we're seated, seated and going through a, a, a crib sheet. We need to be outside. Yeah, if we're outside, we're, we're sitting down, uh, normally out of the wind or something. Uh, main advantage to this, each person gets their own audio control. So you can say, you know, if somebody's loud or quieter, you adjust their, their levels so everybody comes out at the same level. You do not want to have people significantly quieter than somebody else. 
Uh, that's why I like, that's why, I, again, I'll, I'll emphasize I love headset mics, because that gives a constant mic position. People don't look away from the microphone, and it keeps it out of their face. They don't, I, I tend to find that they don't get as intimidated by it. Uh, you can control your background, and the mixer allows you to also bring in uh, extra audio. If you're doing a podcast live, and without, edit, without any post-production at the end, or minimal post-production, you, you're going to want to mix audio in. It's, it's a, yeah, I like having bumpers and, you know, intros and outros and that sort of thing. It makes it fun. Um, you can, it also allows you to use the option of better mics than the Omni option. Um, and you can only get better amps. It's interesting to have better amps in. It gets complicated though. Let me say, we get up, end up getting a lot of wires. You have three channels, four channels being run to the mixer, stereo channels running out of the mixer. This becomes a pain to carry. I do it, and it works, but if you're going to go hiking for the day, and you know we're out for eight hours, and I want to do a podcast, you know, say we're doing a hiking podcast, right? And we're out in, out in some meadow somewhere. This is a lot of equipment to carry around in your bag. This Behringer, which is a battery-powered microphone, that's why I brought it. It's one of the only battery-powered microphone, or, or battery-powered mixer. It's one of the only ones out there. There's a Mackie and something else, but they tend to be, you mentioned, a three-channel mixer. But those tend to get big bucks. How much was that? A hundred bucks. Cool. And, yeah. Uh, yeah, I believe it's a four-channel Mac that's around 160, but it doesn't have XLR inputs. I so think. so all, kind of all that goes right into your computer? No, I, I, normally I either into here. No. I actually drive it right into a, an right. MP3 recorder. I've got a couple I can choose from. I've right. that over time. But output from the mixer, drive it straight into your portable audio recorder. In our case, we're moving around. We can't carry a computer with us. Right. Well, we can't carry a computer with us. Uh, the main problem with computers is, and it's you know, one argument for the other, things can go wrong. Yeah. Audio applications <laughs> can crash, they can end, yeah. and after you've recorded 45 minutes of audio, if you lose it all, it kind of stinks. And you can never get back to that background audio. If you had, you know, in our case, we had the turkeys really riled up. It's kind of fun to have the turkeys really riled up, but that's something to the show, you know. But, yeah, it's, that's why we go either record to that guy or I've got Arcos, which is a little thing. That I can to. And if you use a computer, half the time you're worrying about how do I suppress the fan noise. Exactly. And, uh -huh. Exactly. And that's, a, that's a huge deal. My Arcos is a great little recorder. If you use the internal, mar an internal microphone on it, you hear, you hear yeah. the hard drive head running. I'm sorry, that's not, you know, I might not put the highest emphasis on highest quality of audio because we're outside and picking up ambient noise, but that's too much. You know, another trick to use is use multiple recorders. Yes. Multiple so you have just have one that's like what? separate in parallel, like one goes. Right. Did he say something? Yeah, multiple oh, recorders. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so if one goes goes dead. Right. Yeah. You know. Exactly. And this, you know, if you're pulling an output from a mixer, it's insanely easy to do. Or you know, there's there's a couple of different ways to do it if you're if you're worried about losing your audio. But sometimes you're at a place uh, where you want to record, uh, say, a, a speaker mm -hmm. or something like that. So you just put one recorder next to the speaker. Yeah. yeah. There you go. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. If, if you want to do it in post, um, you, can, you can definitely mix a lot of things in post. Right. We tend not to, uh, and I don't talk about it a lot, I don't have a lot of experience with it, because I don't have the time. I'm probably one of the only people here that gets a podcast up and out in two hours. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, we, we, we got a small farm to run, and spending six hours editing audio, unfortunately, just isn't, that, isn't that acceptable. Um, these are some big problems. This is one of the reasons why we don't do a ton of editing. Editing with background audio can be really hard. Let me warn you, I, I love podcasts with good background audio. I hate ones with bad background audio. You know. But if, you're doing, if you've got some nice audio in the background, and I'll give you an example, you have some long-term sound that's going for a while. You've got turkeys gobbling, okay? You can't, and you screw up, you, you stumble over some words. You say ums, and you want to cut that um out. If the turkeys gob started gobbling in the middle of what you're cutting, and you start it up after that, you can't start in the middle of a turkey go. <laughs> um, you can't start in the middle of some sound. You know, let's say you're at a coffee shop or wherever, right? And, or you're in a meadow. Let's go back to you're doing a hiking podcast and there's some, you're in a meadow, somebody's talking and a bird starts up and starts twittering for, you know, they can, they can make noise and sing for 30 seconds, minutes at times. You want to take a chunk of audio out you can't jump into the middle of when that bird started making noise. It won't, assuming you want it to be seamless. 
if you want a seamless edit, you can't do that. You have to do either a major break or something to edit it out. The way we got around it, we stopped editing. Uh, it, and before, you know, I'm sure a lot of people do what? You don't edit your podcast. The moment we stopped editing, we started getting positive comments. Um, and, you know, this isn't applicable for everybody. Um, you know, we have a, you know, and you, you know, I'm not saying don't put major sections together. We do the podcast at one time. If you want to put together multiple sections, whatever, it's fine. But editing minor edits inside of a segment are going to be hard. It's just, that's all life, that, that's what there is. Yeah. Well, I, I think you're, you're absolutely right because you have, you have to be sort of like innovative, but you have to be innovative in the moment. Right. And so you make the magic as it happens rather than, you know, afterwards, which is a lot harder, you know. It's, it's like, it uh, is. you and know, can, making a live album as opposed to recording. Recording, exactly. You got to make the magic happen at the time. And quite honestly, I think it took us about two shows to figure it out. And after the first two shows that we did completely live, it wasn't that big of a deal. Yes, there's ums. Yes, there's us. You stumble all the time. But people expect that in normal conversation. You do that on CBC too. Well, they have a lot of cleanup. In <laughs> they there, lose their voices. <laughs> yeah. Well, also, if you're saying you're, you're using a mixer, and so if one, if, like if you're if you've got more than one person who's mm -hmm. doing the show at one at one time, and one of you designated engineer, they okay. could be bringing in that that ambient sound in and out as well. Oh like yeah. Music, so. Exactly, and you can pull out somebody. Someone needs to cough. You know, there's no reason why you just don't pull it, you know, right. basically cut them off if you, have, if you have a cough button, hit that, you know. But there's, there's a lot of ways around it. Um, our biggest problem is planning. We have a crib sheet we do. It's fine. You know, you start, you, you can get into the run of it, so don't be scared of, of limiting, limiting your editing you have to do. Don't let that hold you back. Um, have fun with it. Background noise can overwhelm you. Yeah. If it's momentary, you know, stop talking. Let, it, let whatever that noise is pass. Or if it's going to be a long-term sound, either you know, get closer to the microphone and bring your volumes up, which kind of sucks, or pull it back on the uh, on the mixer. That's the real advantage of the mixer. You can pull that audio back. And let's see, might pick up something you don't want. Um, that's that can be problematic. Let's say you're doing a podcast about whatever, and you're in a factory floor. You might have some language going on that is not indicative of something you want to present to the public. You should, but you never know, right? So be careful and listen to what, what's in your background of audio. Um, we had one fellow, which I, he's a great listener, you know, I, I really value his input, sent us a Google uh, bookmark to our house. It was a Google Earth pin on our house. And he said, that, that kind of gave us a little bit of a, what the? He says, well, I listened to your podcast. I sort of knew the area. I listened to when I heard the trains go past in the background. And I sort of located your house. <laughs> <laughs> you might not, you know, that's something you can, you know, there's other ways to find me. And it's, it's fairly easy. But that kind of said, huh, that sort of picked up something we really didn't intend, didn't it? <laughs> um, and the other big thing, you know, another thing is, of course, equipment needs to be portable if you want to take it with you. Portability isn't a huge deal, but it does limit your choice, um, especially microphones. It, it, you know, you can't be banging around your, your large diaphragm condenser. It's not going to survive that well. One thing that you do run into if you're doing it outside is wind noise. It's a huge deal. Um, I don't know great ways to get around it. It's get out of the wind. That's, that's the easy answer. Um, Wind noise basically sound like just sort of a, a roar. Is that how you describe it, Tim? A roar? A, like how do you describe wind noise picked up by a microphone? It doesn't sound like wind. Yeah, no, it's just like. Yeah. And yep. then you can't hear it. Exactly. Never good in the microphone. Um, and there's ways around that. This is not one way around it. Um, for, back, for your background audio mic, there's a, you have a whole, you can use a whack of microphones. If you want to use your, if you, if you have the ability to use a condenser, you know, condensers pick up everything, right? A big, large diaphragm condenser, it'll, you know, hear the, uh, the mouse run across the floor on the other side. Not always an option because not, not durable. Electric, and it's spelled that right, whatever. Uh, it's spelled out here. Um, are convenient, this sort of thing. They're durable, they're hard, they're handy. These, these are both binaural microphones. Anything that has a little capsule electric mic inside it works like a charm. 
you have to drive them really hard, um, which can lead to amplifier noise. But they're great, only little mics. And that's, you, need to, you need a ton of, applica of application form, that's one problem. Um, and they are subject to a lot of wind noise, which is unfortunate. That's why I went to this guy. Let me explain this little guy. I think they're great microphones. This is what's called a boundary layer microphone, or if you buy it from Crown, which actually you can find it really cheap on eBay. It's called a PZM uh, pressure zone microphone. And what they do is they use a flat surface to pick up some of the audio. As sound bounces off a flat surface, you can pick it up on its way through and on its way back. And they can be really cheap. Those guys, that guy's an ancient one. Um, I think they're 50 bucks on eBay. You can get all, and that's a, that's a fairly nice, nice one. The first came <laughs> you can also get some really expensive, fancy ones. Uh, if you ever go to a, a, a concert hall or a, a theater, you can sometimes see a clear plate sitting up there, just hanging up in the in the in the air. That's they'll probably have a boundary layer microphone on it, or you can have one on a stage floor. They're actually very convenient. Um, they're a little bit specialized. You'll probably buy it online or from a decent audio supply spot. I think the source has them. The source has them? Wow, okay. Um, yeah, you're right, they might have them. Radio Shack. Yeah. I, I know, maybe. I live in the middle of nowhere, so I, 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 I order heard everything heard. online. Um, the, the problem with them is they're subject to surface noise. So if you have them on this table and start banging out on this yeah. table, that will get right into the microphone. Because the table acts as the microphone. The table is. This whole surface, so this guy sitting here, yeah. this entire surface is acting as the microphone and it's picking up the audio. Um, one advantage is they are not subject, or they are much less subject, susceptible, susceptible yeah, much less susceptible to wind noise. So if you're outside, you can sit that guy down on a flat surface, and you, the wind noise will, pr will pretty much cancel out. That's, that, that's the main advantage. That's why we really like doing it, because outside, no more wind noise. All you have to worry about are these guys. <laughs> are these guys. So are you saying if you just suspend it in the air is no. like the best way to use it? Can't, you can't suspend okay. it. It has to be on a flat surface. Unless no, you, you could. Well, you could. You have to have a flat surface. But the, the only surface that's going to pick up is the square. Right. What he's yeah. suggesting yeah. is the more square, or the, you put it on that wall there, right. and, and the whole, it'll pick up the whole wall. Yeah. If we were, gonna, if we were actually recording here with this microphone, go glue it to that wall. You'll have an excellent little microphone. <laughs> Big, yeah, big bike. Now, if you have, if you have noisy pipes and AC running right behind that wall, that might not be what you're looking for. But when you're outside in a windy environment, I've had really good luck with them. Um, sort of two problems, uh, not really a problem, well, two problems, I guess. You have the, the surface noise, something bangs in the surface, you're going you're to pick it up. Other problem is, if you want any bass, you're going to need a relatively large square. That's why that wall would be perfect to pick up lots of bass. Um, you don't you have a small surface and that base rolls off at quite a high frequency. Well, it's not bass anymore, but the frequencies roll off fairly high. And you get, you know, I guess tinny, tinny sound coming out of it. You know how you can eliminate uh, wind noise? Is, uh, well, you can have a bigger piece of foam, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Uh, there are some specialized units. Also. Yes. You can also hide it under your clothes, which mm -hmm. makes it a little bit muffled. Right. But, you know, if yeah, at least you don't block out. it out. Right. And if because, you, I mean, you can record in, you know, like a high wind. Sure. You know. And, if, if, you know, if that means, if one of the reasons for that microphone is just to pick up ambient sound. Yeah. As long as you're then feeding it with extra audio, or even if you're high, you know, if you're using a yeah. butler mic, yeah. hidden under, yeah. hey, you know, work. it might be important enough to so be in that high wind environment. Movie, so all of them, yeah. they're all, all yeah. 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 Yep. And, you know, if it's, if you you're in a... There are some people are... Well, there are throat microphones mm -hmm. that they use in jet airplanes. Yes. And, uh, you know, you can also record through ears and whatever. Yeah, you can. That. Actually, these, that's what these guys kind of do. Now, they actually pick it up a lot through the, uh, the bones running through the mm -hmm. ear, which is kind of neat when you're talking. Um, there's a ton of microphones. Unfortunately, I'm not an expert with microphones. So you have to do some of your own research on different options. But, yeah, there's throat mics. Go ahead. I just did a scan on the throat mics. I picked up one, uh, one from Bass Pro. It was meant for hunters to communicate with you know, uh -huh. and uh, the sound was absolutely normal. Uh, I couldn't even <laughs> hear my blank from the side of the side. We had it hooked up for a moment, a lot of clock Okay. And I returned it with some of that. 
So uh, that gets you more expensive to type. But for my application, being on the road, yeah. a throwback would be perfect. But right. That didn't work out. Yeah, uh, with uh, motorcycle headsets, there, you know, there's, there's so much wind there. That's a, that's a good test for anything. Yeah. Wind oriented, isn't it? Yeah. Um, you know, we don't have a perfect answer for the wind. We can just try to get out of it. That's a simple response. Or, you know, we do it inside. Uh, we're still in the barn, so you, you, that sort of cuts it down. To <coughs> um, voice microphones. Okay, I guess we sort of talked about a lot of this. Um, again, we use something small and portable. You break one of these, who cares? Yeah, I can actually buy these locally. That's kind of cool for me. Uh, but whatever you want. You want it to be portable, you want it to be robust. And you, I, you know, I suggest you want something directional. You want it to pick up your voice and your voice only. You've got a background mic you have to pick up all that background noise. Do it, you know. Don't don't be picking up with your with your voice mics. Yeah. Do most of the current headset mics come with mini plugs or are they going XLR? No, it depends. Okay, those are cheap. Mini mini jacks, and I got a box that takes them back out to something decent. The better mics you buy, I believe they'll be coming out balanced at least. A lot of them have, will have batteries to go along with them that provide your amplification for you. And taking a balanced output to XLR is really easy. So I think you'll find a lot more luck if you want to spend a few bucks. Um, and uh, the last, thing, last three items in that list are the noise gate limit, compression and limiting. Um, noise gate basically means that when you're not talking, the mic gets squelched. Nice feature. If you can find uh, some audio processing to do this for you, do it. When I built my own box, the chip for it that you can buy is two dollars. So these these things should be cheap. You probably end up paying fifty bucks for it though. Um, noise gate I really do like. It really turns off that microphone when you're talking into it. Not a huge deal though if you have a good directional mic. Uh, compression, yeah. Take it or leave it. That's your choice. Does, does it pump? Do you actually hear it turn off? Oh, the, the noise gate. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, definitely. You should uh, just sell your own noise gate. I thought about it for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you could have sold it for 50 bucks. Yeah. Um, but you got to know the cameras. Well, I, there's, there's some, that's not, the, the design I used on this one is not the final design. Um, but yeah, it's, I'm really amazed that there's not cheap, this, especially cheap, because it's mic preamp, noise gate, compression, and limiting takes your high end, just like your noise gate, yeah. where you take, when you're quiet, it shuts off the microphone. Limiting takes it when you're really too loud. Mm -hmm. And it cuts it back so you don't overload your inputs. Nobody likes to hear yeah. input clipping. Um, you can buy all sorts of stuff to do this for you, but it tends to be pricey. Um, I like making stuff, so. Um, oh, I think it's supposed to be watch out for me. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I was doing this early this morning. Um, and we really like headset mics. I've said that so much. Um, mixer plus audio, mixer battery power. This is the only cheap example I could find of a decent mixer. And I like it. I know lots of people don't like Behringer. But you know what? This is, it works. It does the job. And if you break it and you smash a knob off it, carrying it around somewhere, you know, so what? Not the end of the world. Um, honestly, I like at least four to six inputs on the mixer that you're going to be carrying with you. We do it live, so we've got myself, my wife, uh, background audio, there's three, and then we mix in our bumpers. So there's four inputs just to do a simple two-person podcast. And I know we've thrown in an extra person, which means five, and you start running a little bit short if you go any more than that. So, and you might want multiple background audio. I've always sort of thought it would be fun to have a, you know, a little sound effect. You know, podcasts I listen to, if they get boring, they have crickets. You know, it'd be fun to have, be able to flip in crickets. Um, and you want it to be light and sturdy. Um, that guy's metal. It's fine. Now for our audio player, we do it live, so I'm using an iPod just straight into the mixer to do, produce audio. That's how I mix in all our bumpers. And it works. You can use any audio player you want, whatever it is, as long as it's quiet. You don't, you know, the iPods, you have know, a feature you can make them click as you scroll through stuff. Probably bad when you're recording all the background audio around you. Um, and in this case, since we do a bunch of clips on the iPod, um, you want, and we, we do a bunch of call-in, People can call us and leave voicemails, just do K7. Everybody, knows, everybody here knows what K7 is? Okay. K7. It's a, it's a free voicemail service. 
that you can get a number in Seattle, people can call, they can then leave a voicemail, and it sends you a WAV file. K7.net, fairly convenient. Um, using it, I think using it efficiently in a podcast is a bit of a trick, but if we have some time at the end, we can talk about that. Mm -hmm. If you just give it a voicemail number, no one's going to call. Um, we, we get several calls a week, and that's because we put those voicemails as the first thing in the show and make a big deal about them. People like to call shows and hear themselves. And we, the, way we got, we, the way we got it started was we, I called a few podcasting friends of mine and said, call this number and leave a voicemail. I don't care what it's about, just do it. And they did it. And that got the ball rolling. And we put a, we did it at first in the middle of the show, towards the end, whatever, just playing it randomly. We got one call in like three months. Um, we do them now. We get two calls a week, at least, if not more. And that's because that's our first segment of the show is the farm phone. And give it a cute name, it'll work too. Um, but the main key for that is if you're going to be playing a bunch of clips, there's a bunch of, there's a free tool out there. There's got to be other ones called MP3 Game. Um, Take all, I have to, you know, it's going on to an iPod, so an MP3 format. Put all your input audio that you're going to use at the same level. It's not, it's easier said than done, but at least get them close. You don't want somebody in the car or whatever they're listening to the podcast reaching over and cranking the volume knob around every time a new clip comes through. <coughs> so get your clips levelized at the same level. I don't care how you do it, it, just, it helps. And you can do it with the mixer, but you don't want to be fiddling with that knob the whole show. But, you know, that gets annoying. And if you're going to do clips, put some silence at the end. So when the clip comes to an end, you don't flip to your next clip right away. That can be a little annoying. <coughs> but that's kind of minor. Um, and sort of almost wrapping around. But the key is, have fun. Your listeners can hear it. Trust me. They, they can, if you're not having a good day through your podcast, maybe you can do some editing and try to pull it out. But keep a smile on your face and make it a real smile. It does come through the audio really well. Um, don't have the background too quiet. Oh yeah, okay, next one also, or the last one also works. Um, if you have the background too quiet, when you talk about it, they don't know what you're talking about. And also, don't talk about backgrounds they can't hear about. I hate it when you hear some podcast, you're going, oh, sorry about that, He's, you know, something happened in the background, he heard it, but nobody else heard it. Listen to what's coming through your headsets, you're wearing it for a reason. You know, talk about your background if you want to, great, we always do. You know, when the goat was banging into the wall, great topic. You know, what the heck's he doing? Is this, you know, rubbing his head or something, whatever it was. It adds to the podcast and gives people a smile. But, you know, don't talk about something you can't hear. Oops, wrong. There we go. I guess I've talked about your podcast a lot, so it's a little too much everything. But, uh, anyways, we. What's the goat's name? That one was Bonafide. What's that? Bonafide. Bonafide. Okay, that's pretty much it. Any questions before we get around? Not a great inspiration. What's that? I listened to Don Drew a while ago. No, not really. Okay. Because they live on a farm as well. We've got tons of animals. Do they? Yeah. Tons of animals. Tons of animals. They copied from Andrew. They copied from Andrew. Sure. But yeah, it's...